Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all Amen. God's people said. Amen. Father, we just praise you. We just thank you for the book of Yehoshua. And we just ask that we be drawn into marching against the enemy. And Lord Jesus, may we know of your plans that you have for us. So bless this world to our hearts. Give us understanding. Give us new life. Give us breath. And may we see the power of your Spirit conquer us. Glory to the Father, to the Son, Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All God's people say, Amen. Amen. All God's people say, Amen. All God's people say, Amen. Amen. Verse 1 of Yehoshua. Now the word, as you probably know by now, it's called the sixth book of the Bible, and it's also sometimes it's so connected with the first five books of the Bible called Torah. Torah that sometimes they they call the the first five books Pentateuch. So that this is so connected with the rest of the story, they call it when Joshua is added to it Hexateuch. Okay. Now, Pentateuch means five scrolls. Five scrolls. So what's that? Hexateuch. Six scrolls. So we're now looking into the Hexateuch. Hexateuch. H e x a t e u c h. Hexateuch. Have we ever heard of Hexateuch? No. Never heard of it. Hexateuch. All right. So let's look at the Hexateuch. Join to the Pentateuch. And if we have another joining to it, it would be the Septuagint. Oh. I haven't read that in my studies that there is a Septuagint. And the Tractuk. So there's a Pentateuch and then there's a Hexateuch. And the Tractuk. Okay? The word Tuk, T U C H, means scroll in Hebrew. It's T U C H, not T E U C H. T E U C H. T E. Okay. Okay. And um, Pentateuch, is it uh, Pentateuch? To, is that an E or an A? Penta? Or e E N T A. Penta. A, Penta. Okay. Pentateuch, which means five scrolls. Right. When you're taking a course sometimes in a seminary, they'll call the course the Pentateuch. Because if you're Jewish, you say Torah. But being we're not Jewish, we might yield to the word Pentateuch. I took a course in the seminary called the Pentateuch. <coughs> so it should be. It should be the Torah. Verse 1. Now, if you look at um, the connection to Deuteronomy 34, and if you underline, go to the last verse, two verses. Verse, verse 10 of 34. Moses dies at the right old age of? 120. 120. Mm -hmm. And... Here are his breakdown of his years. The first 40 years, he said, I am everything. The second 40 years, from 41 to 80, he says, I am nothing. From 80 to his death, he says, God is everything. Mm -hmm. yes. How many of the older you get, <laughs> You should think about God more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how many of most do. of the older people I speak to only think about bingo more? <laughs> <laughs> do you see that, sister? Mm -hmm. They're thinking, not all of them? No. A lot. A lot, yes. All right, now here's what he says in verse 10. And, now that's their favorite word, and, ever say and. And. There was not risen a prophet in Israel like Moses. All right, everybody underline that. This is connection to Deuteronomy 18.10. Mm -hmm. 
It's right after, right after it says, somebody's coming after Moses, who is greater than Moses. Now, of course we know that prophecy in Deuteronomy 18.10, as the Lord Jesus. Who's his follow-up man? Jesus. He has a name. If you were to say the name Jesus in Hebrew, it would be Yahushua. Or when I read the ancient book that the Jews had, their commentary book, they called Jesus Yeshu. The Jews for Jesus will call it Yeshua. But, and I even hear Khan saying, when I studied deep rabbinical thought, <coughs> they never used the word Yeshua. They'd always call Jesus Yeshu. Why? E S H U. All right, so just for your F Y I. So now here's the connection bridge. Moses just passed away with V and V. Vim and vigor. Vim and vigor. In other words, it looks like he really didn't even die a death. He died. He was filled with life. In Deuteronomy 32, he stands up and he sees the promised land on top of the mountain. Now, I told you when we were in the Holy Land, and Peggy will be coming with me again, when we go to the Holy Land, I told you when we hit Mount Zion, everybody just waved to Moses. Because he saw us there. Did you get that? Yes. Why am I waving now? Because he saw us there. Are you getting it? This book, this is called Jewish mysticism. Now, this will not pass a test. So, Ms. Henry. What does Deuteronomy 18.10 have to do with what yeah, you're saying? 18.15? 18.15. 18, 18, oh, 15? Oh, oh, yes, 15. Oh, okay. 18.15. <laughs> a prophet like me. 18.15. 18.15. Oh, I know. Yes. Thank you. You got it? Now, when you read Deuteronomy 18.15, you see Jesus in there. Right. Right, Jesus. But what's the next book of the Bible called? Jesus. Interesting, isn't it? Are you seeing all these connections? Yes. Okay, I just want to finish reading the end of Deuteronomy 34. And he says there, whom the Lord knew face to face. Penny out to penny out. When you read the end of Genesis, it's called face to face. Now, when we all go to heaven, Revelation 22, 4 and 5, we're going to see God face to face. You got it? Yeah. Amen? Amen. And then Frank is saying God face to face. Now verse 11. None like him and all the signs and wonders. If you circle the word signs and wonders. Signs and wonders is a New Testament word meaning miracles. When you read the Gospel of St. John, it's called the signs. How many signs are in John's Gospel? Seven. How many miracles did Jesus do as we have them recorded? Thirty-six. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. But, of course, John 20 says he did a whole lot more, way beyond our imagining. So far, so good? None of them for signs, so circle signs and wonders, which the Lord sent him to do the land of Egypt. So where were the first miracles? At a town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To Pharaoh and to all his servants and all his land, and for all the mighty power and the great and terrible deeds. Now what's the great and terrible deeds? It's phenomenal what we saw, but some of them were terrible because people, like the firstborn, died. Where are you? Deuteronomy 34. Oh, 34. Oh. The last verse. Got you. I'm just bringing in this into the connection, that's all. 
Then he says there, the terrible deeds which Moses wrought in the sight of all of Israel. So there are great signs, and there were terrible signs. How many were there? There were ten plagues, but there were a whole lot more. What happened when he struck the rock and the water and everything else? Numbers 20. What happened when the people got bit by snakes? Red snakes. <laughs> they lifted up the snake on a pole so you can pay your medicine, your medical bill. And then they lifted it up and what happened? All the people got healed. What happened to Miriam who doubted the authority? She sick. She said, why are you? Who, who do you think you are? And what happened to her? She became a leper for one week. What happened in number 16 when a group of people uh, challenged him? The ground opened up and swallowed. Those are the guys you're going to see heading toward the cooker. <laughs> now, <coughs> Moses has died with V and V. He dies on a mountain called Pisca. P I S G H. Uh, Deuteronomy 34, verse 1, 2, 3. P I S G A H. P I S G A H. And where is that Deuteronomy 34, 1, 2, 3. Okay? Now, he's got to have a commissioning because we've got to carry this down. Now, let's be honest. Usually, the originator is usually the best, right? So usually you say, who could really take Moses' place? We would say a hard act to follow. Mm -hmm. But now we have got to come in and we're going to see all of Israel become Israel for the first time. Mm -hmm. And just for your FYI, all of Israel has not become Israel yet. So in our day, we're going to see Israel become Israel. More about that. Amen. Are you getting excited? Mm -hmm. Alright, so let's look at verse 1. After verse 1. Yahushua. Everybody say Yahushua. Yahushua. So far so good? Mm -hmm. Are we over anybody's head? Just go slow. Go slow. That's little sister Marie. <laughs> after the <laughs> death. Um, oh. Put us to sleep. All right, now, the word death is the word in Hebrew for what? Moot, M-U-T. Moot. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, he gets the title that he is a servant. Now, if you underline the word servant, it is another word for prophet. Now, are you all servants in here? Yes. yes. How many want to be a servant of the Lord? Yes. When you call yourself a servant of the Lord, you're saying, I want to live the prophetic word. Yes. That's why when we have our sharing next month, beaming it out to California, of course, we need to tell you how you're servants by prophesying. Have you all done that before? No, none of you have done it. It's about time. I just prophesied where this lady has two mean dogs. <laughs> the servant of the Lord, the Lord sent to Yehoshua. Everybody say Yehoshua. Yehoshua. Okay, so that's how he says his name. The son of Nun. So he had, uh, he had a nun as his father. It's true, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Moses is <coughs> minister. Now, when you come into the Word of God as prophet, you are called to minister. But the word minister does not understand it as you do, um, originally. But it has a meaning only around the worship of God. We need to pick men and women who worship God. Now, all, probably everybody here has been involved in the church with some minister, yes? Mm -hmm. 
Everybody's done something for the church? Yes. Mm -hmm. And this one dude at 1030 Mass counts people. And when he looks at his when he looks at his wife because his wife is so beautiful, he'll go one, two, three, four. The numbers are really off because my wife is worth a lot. <laughs> now as a minister, when you read Romans fifteen, Paul uses it. It's a liturgical word. It's around the altar. Now, you haven't worshipped God until you focus only on Him. Did you ever sing a song and your mind is, oh, i got to take Joe out for dinner and all this <laughs> stuff. I don't want to do anything to the dog this day. That never happened to you. Amen? So how many have worshipped where God is the sole focus of you? Mm -hmm. Then you have ministered. Amen? Amen. Verse 2, ma'am. Thank you. She likes to know where we are. Mm -hmm. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan. So where are the people now? They're on the other side of the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to say? We're going to cross the Jordan. Amen? Amen? Is this exciting? Mm -hmm. Now, crossing the Jordan. Remember the word Jordan means descent, descent into judgment. Mm -hmm. Crossing the Jordan has the same power of leaving Egypt. Now, when they crossed the river, by the way, the name of the river, just for review, is called Yam, Y-A-M. The C, Suf, S-U-P-H. Now when you taught all your kids, even this book says the Red Sea. The Hebrew does not say that. So it's called the Sea of Reeds. Am I going somewhere else, sister? <coughs> so, now, nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in, in the Bible does it say the Nile River. When they cross the river, it would always call it the river. Mm. And he say that in Hebrew, ye or y e o r. So now we're crossing, and you're going to see the Jordan River. Now this spot is going to be very important because Elijah is going to go up in his chariot right there. Mm -hmm. Number two. John the Baptist is going to appear there. Number three, Jesus is going to be baptized there. That's an amazing spot, isn't it? Mistless. So this is some spot. So notice that God never picks spots out arbitrarily. Amen. He's baptized there. Yeah. He's baptizing you. Yeah. You baptized me. Yes. Missy was baptized there. This is the Yamsu. The Yamsu. No. This is the Jordan. I just gave an example. But this is likened to what's going to happen there. The same power that was released when the waters did this. It's going to happen here. The same God, the same power. The meaning is powerful. Amen? Amen. Sister. Now, this is the same spot that Elijah went up at? Right yeah, you're, there? You, you stood on it. Okay. That's Anybody been with me in Israel last time? Yeah. <laughs> you stood on the spot. Remember Stacy and Frank were there? Yeah, You stood on the spot. Yes, sister. Is there any, is there any um, mention of that spot in Revelations? The Jordan spot? Yeah. No. Where all those things happen? No. Okay, I was just curious. Now what's going to happen in revelatory times is Luke 1.17 You 
will have the spirit and the power of Elijah. Now, something shocking just happened in Israel. But the Jews didn't report it to you. No. So I'll tell you. For the first time, I think ever, they had a hurricane come in. Wow. Because over the Mediterranean waters, it doesn't form them. They were shocked out of their minds. <laughs> How many would be shocked if in, here in Israel and a hurricane comes in? You probably didn't know what's going on. If, if you've been following the weather patterns, you know, London's been, and the Azores, they've been getting hurricanes. Hmm. This is getting very interesting, isn't it? Miss Lisa. That's, that's almost impossible. It just happened. It just happened. A hurricane came into the. It has to Israel. form the water. It was. It was swishing over the water. The Mediterranean went right into Israel. Hmm. It did. And you weren't there to see it. But you were sitting comfortably watching the dog bounce look at the window for his girlfriend. <laughs> they call it a medicane. A medicane. Yeah. A medicane. Yeah. Oh, you found the article? Uh huh. A medicane. Yeah. A medicate. This is not like medicate. Yeah. Right, it's a medicate. That's wild. Well. All right, you ready to go on? Yes. Yeah. Is this interesting? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, are you enjoying this? Of course. This is what you wanted. Verse 2, ma'am. Most of my servant is dead. Now therefore rise, go over the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land which I am giving to them, the sons of Israel. Okay, so now they're birthed as sons of Israel. The Bnei Yisrael. Israel means they fight for, for, fight for God. So they're on the other side now coming in. And those of us who just came back from Israel this past year, we were on the spot. You were too, Sister Lisa. You were there too. Mm -hmm. But your husband still stayed home calling kids, uh, whatever they, uh, kids or persons or whatever they, not right, like over there. <laughs> Verse 3. <laughs> Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you. Now underline that. What do you see? They go from the name of the two places. Uh, remember the two places? You'll be quizzed on this. Thank you. They go from the Shittim. Thank you, God. They stay preparing for this journey from Shittim, and they crossed over, and they're going to arrive in Gilgal. Gil which means the rolling. Does it mean to be put, moved? Now, God just said, every place that your sandal steps on is your land. Now, when they go to Gilgal, I'll tell you, I think everybody here saw it, it forms, when they settled in their camp, it formed a foot. You could see it on your you could see it on your machines. Mm -hmm. They took a drone and went above the area and they saw a gigantic foot form. Is that amazing or what? Now the people believe that, but can you imagine we twenty first centuries, we now see it? So how many think the Bible is quite accurate? Amen? Amen. So I will tread upon and I have given to you as I promised to Moses. So now what is that footprint? It's God's. So we always say the expression, walk with God. Kalam. He was literally walking with him. Because to this day he has allowed for us moderns to see the, the foot where the foot where he was. Amen? Interesting, isn't it? Next, he says there, verse 4, man. Thank you. From the wilderness. Can I say wilderness? Midbar. Midbar. M-I-D-B-A-R. From the Midbar. And this Lebanon is the great river Euphrates. Now, in the Bible, when they give the whole dimensions of the land, it always goes to the Euphrates River. 
Somebody say, where's that? Where's that? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> it's in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And that's the boundary line. Why do we have the Ritter phrase? You can see this in Genesis chapter 2, verse 10. You can see the rivers there. So what happened in the rivers where the Euphrates was? The Garden of Eden. Are you getting all these connections then? Do you like your choice, sister? Yes. Okay, so in Genesis 2, verse 10 and 11, you can see the Euphrates. Now, what's important of the Euphrates? The Euphrates was the division line. This is in the book of Revelation. When the Armageddon, they cross over the Euphrates. It will dry up. What's happening at the Euphrates right now? It's drying up. It's drying up. <coughs> Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Are we getting ready for Armageddon? Yes. Yeah. And the march in? Hmm. What's that mean? So what's the division? The division of what? Euphrates is the division? Euphrates, I told you Genesis 2. Yeah. The Euphrates is the mark when the Abraham crossed it. And they were oh. called Hebrews. Mm. What does the word Hebrews mean? Crossing the river. Are you getting that? Crossing the river. So there were three crossings then yeah. in the Bible, right? Now remember I gave that word about a thousand times. Iberu. E P I R U. Dr. Paul. He has his mouth open. Father, when um, Abraham crossed the Euphrates, was there any kind of miraculous splitting of the river? Mm. Not that we know. Mm. That's a very good point. Mm. So now when, when he crossed by, you can read in Genesis 10, it's called Iperu. Iperu means the crossing. And that the word crossing means Hebrews. Have we ever called the Jews the Hebrews? Mm -hmm. Now you know where it comes from. Okay, ready to go on? Yes. This is good stuff. Israelites first, not the Hebrews. Hebrews. <laughs> Originally they're called Hebrews, but because of Jacob wrestling with God that night, they're called Israelites. And that kept all the way to the time of Paul. Paul said in Philippians 3, I am a Hebrew, born of Hebrews. I am an Israelite. After the first century came and went, we never called them Israelites again. We called them what? Jews. Mm -hmm. Are you getting interested? Mm -hmm. Alright, we have another line that. Next, all the land of the Hittites to the Great Sea. I ran the line of the Great Sea. What's the Great Sea? Mediterranean. Mediterranean <coughs> where there was just the Medicaid. Medicaid. <laughs> <laughs> that still is amazing that attorney is dead. It would warm over there. Do you think God's doing something? Yeah. 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 The Hittites of the Great Sea, toward the going down of the, of the sun, this is your territory. So now notice Yehoshua gets the whole territory. Why? What just happened in the Torah, especially in Exodus, they became redeemed. When you become redeemed, you've got to have land to live in. So this is part two of their redemption. First you're redeemed, then you get your land. Amen? Are you getting this? Land? And then the territory. Amen? Amen. Good stuff? Yes. And what is it that made them redeemed? The exodus, the blood on the door. Okay. Did you get that, sister? I'm processing it. Because when he drives home tonight with Miss uh, Missy back there. 
Good stuff. Verse number five. So they weren't redeemed before, like they were because they were in Egypt. The Passover. But they didn't have their own land. Now they're going to have to have their own land. Pesach one. Because it's a proto Pesach. Miss Eileen, you're the only one on your block that knows that. Even my Jackie doesn't know about it. What? I wasn't listening. What did he say? All right, no man, verse five. Underline, underline here. Now watch this. This is really good. This is spiritual warfare at its best. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Wow. Now, how many would like to have an unperturbed, no losses in your life? How many would like to have no losses? Now, all the losses that we experience were not all God's decisions for us, but God allowed it to happen. How many ever lost something? Like money. How many ever lost a house? Did you ever lose a house, sister? I did. <laughs> so, when you're in the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm not saying you weren't. When you really walk in the power of God, you stand there and you go forward. Now, Paul uses the same expert when you do spiritual warfare in Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. That you got to stand and fight. The battle is the Lord. 2 <coughs> Chronicles 20. Interesting, isn't it? So if you underline that there, when you're in the fight, now, when did we hear this expression, stand? If you go all the way back, to Exodus 14, when they're ready to go, everybody back there, go to Exodus 14. You've got to stand, and what do they do? They watch the waters what? Are you there? Chapter 14, I think it's verse 10. Are you getting good stuff? Always. Verse 13. Fear not, stand in the ground. 14.13. Do you see it there? 14.13? So what are you going to do? If you really want to... Now may, may I suggest you do something? Say you have a decision to make. And how many know we've all blown it with our decisions? Yes. Anybody blow up beside me about a thousand times? <laughs> about a thousand times, I think. <laughs> I think that's a, a small number for most of us. <laughs> now, what we need to do, future reference, you need to stand there and say, God, you make, make the decision. Yeah. And you go for it. Now, what does that mean, which we're going to get into prophesying? When you hear that word, you've got to hear it say, now I know God says to move forward. You've got a sense within your manhood, your womanhood, it's time. So what happens here? Does this sound familiar? So does this sound crucial? I think so. So if you look at Exodus 14, 13, then you can see, because this is going to be the second time that there's going to be a major, literally, split. Are you getting this? So stand. Man, we're going back to Joshua, man. Thank you. Joshua. Okay, I want to give you that background. Good background? All right, now go with me to verse 5. Joshua 1, verse 5. All right, this is really good. No man shall be able to stand before you. Is that right? Now, the second thing is when you stand in the midst of your decision, Here's very hard for you. Be not afraid. Here's what you got to do. You stand and you say, Lord, you do it. Now, Paul picks this up in another place. If God is for us, 
Who could be against us? Do you see it right there? Mm-hmm. How many believe God is in your life right now? Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. Then you've got to stand and say, this is it. Do the fighting. Mm-hmm. How many are invited God to do your fighting? Mm-hmm. By the way, you are not meant to fight. Your life is meant to yield to the grace of the Holy Spirit in each of you. Mm-hmm. And then you walk forward, and they're going to think it was you, but you give God the credit. Mm-hmm. Today when we're praying over Deacon, all the pain was leaving his body. Jesus. So, he says to me, you know, Father Bill, I always believed in you. Oh. 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 So, well. Okay, good stuff. Now, what's going to happen here, it's the same power that he gave Moses. Somebody say, so I will be with you. And he said, I'll be with you. Emmanuel. Now, what's his name? Yahushua. Mm. What does Yahushua mean in Hebrew? Savior. Savior. Mm. Hmm. What is the four letters of God? Y, H, W, H. What does that name mean? Savior. Are you getting this yet? Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, I didn't get anything. Now, I will be with you. I didn't say that. Emmanuel. Say, my little kids were singing. Emmanuel. Are you getting this? Next, he says to us. Now watch this. This is this is good. Good stuff. First five, man. Thank you. I will not fail you. Hmm. Now, what was the purpose when they came into the promised land? They were to never lose. But the problem of their loss is we're too bloody human sometimes. We don't keep relying on God. The second thing, I will not forsake you. You walk in the power of God. Now, here's what you do. When you've got to do something difficult, you say this, Lord, may I walk with you and find favor in your sight. Be with me. Go before me. Pray that prayer. Acknowledge God. And listen, Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Acknowledge God. Acknowledge God. Acknowledge God. And your path will be straight. Amen. Is that beautiful? Yes. Now, ready? Yeah. If yes. you do this, you will not fail. Yeah. Let me show you something. Now, this is, I'm going to make an unbelievable statement. You are never meant to ever fail. And you're all sitting there saying, yeah, right. You should see who I married. <laughs> and you're free, sister. Amen. <laughs> you're all invited. Peggy is getting married. So <laughs> yeah. I, I don't do it, Peggy. Don't do it. I want you to know you're all invited. Get your dress ready. <laughs> yeah. Right. Also, pick a color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, this up. Now let me show you a Bible verse where it says, "This is unbelievable." You're never meant to fail. Are you ready to see it? Yes. yes. Is this going to blow your mind? Yes. Now, let me ask you a question before I do that. Do you believe the Bible is true? Yes. 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 All right. Absolutely true. And here you go. Hold your spot now. <laughs> Travel with me to Second Peter. If you wanted a one night stand, <laughs> yeah. well, this is so good, I can pass it off as a one night stand. No. Amen? Are you getting good stuff? Yes. If you're getting good stuff, say amen. 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 Right.
so many trips to my computer and my Bible, which you put it back and I don't know what it is. Yeah. First Before Peter. John. After some first Peter. <laughs> 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 All right, first Peter. Go to second Peter. Second Peter. Oh, second Peter. Yeah. Okay. We're looking for a phrase that will blow your mind. Well, what chapter? What chapter? Chapter, chapter. one. Yeah. What chapter one? One. One ninety-nine. All right, everybody with me? Yes. yes. <laughs> It's number 10. It's your first. All right, now, this is my Bible. That's why I ask you if you believe the Bible is true. Therefore, brethren, be the more zealous to confirm your call. I am a redeemed daughter and son. Do this, and you will never fail. What verse? Ten. Ten. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You do this, you will never fail. Is that amazing? Mm -hmm. Now, what do you have to do? Our call and election is firm. So, what do you have to follow what Jesus is? What do you have to do is, it's the verses that precede it. Yeah. You have to fill your life with that. If you fill your life with all those things virtue, knowledge, self control, steadfastness, godliness, and brotherly affection. You do that, and you will never fail. <laughs> mm. And you only have to live on three Michelle Drive. Mm -hmm. You will never fail. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So now you're going to have some waters to cross. Now, I told you this story, not that Peggy is to blame. There was a woman surrounded by fire, coming into Colorado, cul-de-sac. I, I saw the place. What did she do? I'm not going to say it's going to work all the time like that, but I think God's in control, don't you? She put a Divine Mercy picture in her window. <laughs> and guess what happened? The fire skipped over her house. And guess what? She still has a house to go back to. Meanwhile, all the other houses were burned out. <laughs> so, you take Jake's world, you put a picture of the Divine Mercy in. Yeah. Alright? What do you think of that? Never fail. So, now, back with me to Joshua 1 now. When you, when you, when we're marching forth with God's orders, if God gives us an order to do something, is failure part of His plan? No. Does He allow it? Of course. Do we all break apart? Yes. Am I, am I telling you here you'll never fail the rest of your life? I'm not saying that, but if you, if you follow God the way you should, you'll never fail the rest of your life. But remember, when you're in Christ, are you all in Christ? Yes. yes. Turn to the person next to you and say, failures are never fatal. Failures are never fatal. Failures are never fatal. Never fatal. Never fatal. Never fatal. Never fatal. <laughs> Amen. Alright, back with me to Joshua, ma'am. Alright, did you, did you get all this background? Yes. Good stuff. If you go with me to verse 6. Yes. Alright, with me in verse 6. Yes. Be strong. Are you all strong? Yes. Yes, we're so strong. Now, how do you become strong? <laughs> Paul says in Corinthians, you become strong when you, when you first you admit you're weak. You become weak. Now, why is that un American sounds like? Because when you say, it's not a bad thing to say you're, you're weak. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the kingdom of God, it's very good. Mm -hmm. Because when you say to God, I am weak, you are strong, God will say, Bill, I'm finally glad to hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> because I am strong and you are weak, I, then, have just received from you permission to work in your life. And when that happens, he takes over. So by saying I am weak, it's just an admission of the real me in front of the Holy God. So be strong. And by the way, this sounds like Ephesians 6, 10 to 18 again. Putting on the armor. This was there putting on the armor in the Old Testament. I have so much more to show you. 
Amen. Amen. Is this Amen. Good? Good so the second thing he says there is be of good courage. Now, you know, this sounds like the Wizard of Oz. Courage. Here's what courage means. You are scared out of your mind because you live on Michelle Avenue. Courage is I stand here and I can either go this way or this way. I have no idea. So, if I go this way, what if this happens? Did you ever have that problem? Because you were doing what? Overthinking. You were analyzing. Or, if I go this, and this will happen. How many analyze some extra? Mm -hmm. When you have courage, none of that happens. So how do you choose? You stand. Remember we just said, be strong and say, Lord. And he does it. Go before me. Yeah. Go before me. And open the... Now courage is when you have a very difficult thing to say or do to somebody. And you're afraid because of the results. When you have courage, you're not afraid of the results. You just, for example, we have a lot of precious brothers and sisters who died singing to their deaths. They made a statement, it's Jesus, I'm not giving him up. If I don't decide for Jesus, they'll let me go. But I have to live with the fact that I denied Jesus. But if I go for Jesus, and they kill me, and that could be very painful, I'm going home. Yeah. Yeah. So now, when you're at this cross, this is, courage is crossroads. When you're at the crossroads, do not be afraid to suffer for Jesus. Let me give you another example, which is so common. Right now, in the United States, the world, most of the people say, it's not a sin nor bad to me to live with my girlfriend tonight. What have we just happened in my little local church? 90% of the couples are not married. Wow. In fact, it is like three baptism. Couple one, not married. Couple oh. two, not married. Couple three, not married. Hmm. What does Father Bill say to couple one? Get married. What does he say to couple two? Get married. What does he say to couple three? Get married. Are they married outside of the church? Sometimes. Mm. But guess what happens? Yes, 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 yes. Mm. And then I'm still waiting and what happened? No, 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 no. Uh -huh. So we need courage. Mm -hmm. Courage is there's only one or two spots mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. So now what are they going to see to get a booster shot? The water's going to go. Mm -hmm. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. Alright, so everybody understand courage? Do you remember a book? Did anybody read it? The Red Bench of Courage? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was a long time ago. Yeah. I remember reading that in some mm -hmm. class I had. Mm -hmm. I think I should read it again. I don't remember the story. Mm -hmm. or whatever. I know. I remember Verse 6, man. Thank you. Be strong and encouraged, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore the fathers to them. Now, look at verse 7, man. This past Friday, a woman comes up to me and says, Father Bill, thank you, Mike. For what? She said, when you were pastor in Union City, you looked at me, and I don't remember her. I said, who are you? <laughs> These women always want to attack me. I said, <laughs> <laughs> and she said, you gave me a Bible. And when you gave me that Bible, she said, I did not believe in God. When you handed me the Bible, the Spirit of God came upon me and said, I believe in you. She said, I decided at that moment to come back to God. Amen. Amen. And then she pointed her hand. I want you to know 
the result of me, you giving me that Bible. Here are 20 kids wow. who I'm talking to about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, now, a youth group leader. Yeah. That's then, average. Verse 7. Only be strong. Did we hear that before? This sounds like a Hebrew called parallelism. Mm -hmm. They say the same thing in two lines. One, two. Next verse 7. Be strong and be courageous, being careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Now, the word, the law, is the Torah. When you go through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, as Eileen found out, there are 613 laws. If you'd like to read them all tonight, go for it. You're going to press on your machine and it's going to go for it. A lot of paper there have come out. If you want to read all those 613 laws, go for it. Uh, and of course, inside there, there's a 10. Amen? Right. Now, what, what do the Jews have to do to, get, to live in the promised land? Here are the laws. Now notice, it's you're redeemed by the blood. Exodus 12. Yeah. Then you are, this is the completion of being saved. You cross the what? The Yom Suf. Now it's, the third thing is, you're getting your land. But notice, notice, warning, warning. Notice, you get with getting the land all the rules of living there. Isn't that interesting? What happened, you know our history and our constitution and everything else. We had to develop them and you know the story. But notice, they go into the promised land, here are the laws. This is what's going to keep you safe. Now, I know sometimes We've all had problems with morality. What's the biggest problem in the church today? God says, non toccare. That's Italian, but don't touch. But what do we do? We touch. Because in Genesis chapter 3, the snake says, come here. Touch. Toca, toca, toca. Take a bite, bite, bite. And we say, give me a little bite, will you? And then it turns sour in our stomach, and we disobey the Lord. Or we would have lived here for half a But now, when you are redeemed, you get laws. What is the first thing you got to do when you get baptized in the Spirit, for example? We just did that. That's the first thing you got to do. What's next? I love you so much, God says. Here are the laws of my house. So you had those interesting grandchildren come over. Would you say, whatever you want to do, do it. And when Lisa gets her finger going, that is <laughs> That is a... I want you to take a... Take a I want you all to take a selfie of Lisa's finger. <laughs> that is unacceptable. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You're in. You're in the house. My house. And of course, we'll throw my glass. You're in the house. And when you're in my house, we go according to house rules. Amen. 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 So what happens is, Lisa says, <laughs> and then when you get her wild, she gets on the phone and off she goes. Now what happens, if we're going to live in this house and have Thanksgiving dinner and turkey lurking, we need, this is what we need to do to have a happy. So you're coming, you're redeemed by the blood on the door. You're going to cross into the yam, with the yam soup. Now it's the Jordan because it's the descent into judgment. Here, you want to be happy? Here are the rules. Now, 
with the rules and the word, what do you got to do with them? Ready for this? Yes. This is really good. Be strong, verse 7, man. Thank you. Be strong and very courageous, being careful to the, do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Now, underline this. Turn not to the right or to the left. left. Now you understand. You ready for this? Now you understand what Jesus means. If someone smacks you on the right side, turn the cheek, turn the cheek to the left. Now what does that mean on the deepest level? This will blow your mind. What I'm going to say to you if you smack me here, smack me there. Because now that my face has been smacked, uh, smacking is you take your right hand like this, and you go like this. Whack. And your hands in, and your face is in motion. Mm -hmm. And you're like, whoa, that hurt. And then all of a sudden you start to bring it back. And the hand on this back side hand. comes back like that. Back hand. You got the picture? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, what Jesus means by that in the deeper sense is even though you got smacked on both sides, you still look straight to where you're going. And where I'm going is you smacked me. I still love you. I walk straight. So, now, a second time, this right hand and left hand is mentioned. It's mentioned in the book of Jonah, chapter 3. When Jonah, as you know, has a whale of a time, <laughs> he gets burped out, the end of chapter 2 and he says they preached and they repented and those who repented did not know their right hand so they were so lost and now Jonah is giving them the word of God repent and believe so now they know the power of the right hand and the power of the left hand next you're getting a whole teaching on the right hand and the left hand. In Matthew 6, Jesus says, when you do it with your right hand, then your left hand doesn't know what you're doing. Do you remember all these right and lefts? So we just gave you the whole summary of Jesus' teaching, right hand and left hand. Now, what does Jesus mean by right hand and left hand? Ready for this? Mm -hmm. When you do the right hand and the left hand, if all of a sudden you smack me here, I say, How many think that would shock you if you ever did that? If you beat me here, I don't want, you know, I think you're a crumb. I, and I start cursing at you. You didn't win the victory. If you smack me here, I said, And then I said, Thank you. What would you do? I'd go nuts at your response. And so when Jesus says that your right hand, Matthew 6, doesn't know what your left hand is doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you're in the Holy Spirit, are you all in the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Yes. You should be shocked at what you do. Mm -hmm. So we have Sal talking to the Lombardis. <laughs> <laughs> Now, he would have done that a few years ago. And Andy says she loves her church people. Oh, well, because she's got 35 socks. <laughs> You're right. Now, is, is everybody getting this? Are you getting this, sister? It's powerful. This is Peggy. Are you getting this? Um, one of you. All right. Are these all your troubles, the things that yes. you, you yeah. deal with, not yes. literally smacking you? You are destined. To keep your faith in. You are destined at this second to go to heaven. These are all like minuscule what you're going through. I know we don't see this because this is the only life we know. And pain is pain emotionally. And you dealt with a lot of emotions. But you won. You're winning. You're a conqueror. And after all this time, well... I didn't feel like a conqueror when I was going through it. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Most of the time, I don't feel like I'm one either. You and I are on the same team. Mm -hmm. 
And so do you see the right hand lifting? Go ahead. Gotcha. I'm sorry, did I cut you off? No. Miss Heidi. No, that's what I was going to say about the difficulties. The one side with the difficulty here, this side another difficulty, but you keep your head straight forward knowing where you're going. Thank you, God. This is a magnificent scripture. Mm -hmm. Are you enjoying this? this very, very good. Right. Okay, you got all you got all the smackings on the right and the left. How, I mean, that's a good sermon too, amen. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Yes. I, I love that line. You love that line. I like yes. that one. Thanks for clarifying. All right, I'm on verse seven, man. Turn up to the right hand or to the left that you may now watch this. Have good success wherever you go. So, what's success biblically? I like whatever happens, happen. Because let me tell you about my life. I'm walking through it. If you determine you're walking through all these troubles, nobody knows. <laughs> I mean, when you think of your interesting marriage that you picked him, that you picked him. <laughs> but Lillian is a joy. <laughs> Amen. And so Lillian says, I don't know why I said yes to him. I know why. <laughs> but now she says, What would I do without him? So now, what happens is, this is an unbelievable word. You don't have to worry about three horses. Your, your life is a success. Now, what is six nets? Oh, this is really good. Show the person next to This is really good. This is really good. good. This, is good. this is really good. Yes. Your success is only measured by your obedience to God. Amen. Now, most people don't think like that. I'll be successful if I buy this business and I make a million. That's not success. Mother Teresa of Calcutta coined it the best. The purpose of your life, success, she says, is when you wake up every day. Not that you've got a gazillion dollars in the bank. It's whether you're still faithful to God. So if you wake up tomorrow and you just get out of your bed, however you do that routine every day, and some of you have a very interesting routine. And you just schlep down the hall to the bathroom, that's fine. <laughs> when you get out of bed and you say to God, I still believe you. Amen. And I still love you. Amen. Guess, let me tell you about your life. It's a success. Amen. Are you getting this? Yes. yes. Good stuff. Do you understand success then? Yes. So what's success tied to? Stay in the context. Remember when we say the Bible, we always got to stay in the context. The context is this. What did, what did Joshua say? Or was told, stay with the law of Moses. Because when I'm redeemed, I need how to live in my redemption. Let me give you another scripture. Paul says it this way in Philippians 2, 12 and 13. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I'm, I'm a saved person. By God's grace, I'm going to heaven. By God's Amen. grace. And so guess what? I am so saved by God's grace. I just I don't want to I don't want to ruin it. So I want to follow him and I want to obey him and love him. So I'm going to walk very carefully. Oh, I want to tell some of you off in this room right now. <laughs> oh, I want to bless you. Wow. Guess what? I'm not going to do that because I'm your brother in the Lord and I need to love you. So guess what? I'll hold it off to after Christmas. Anyway. <laughs> so so what happens then? What happens? I'm successful with you because you can see, as one person would say, uh, he always sit in the back of the church. Father Bill, I said, yeah. I gotta tell you something. Yeah, you're the real deal. <laughs> you're the real deal. <laughs> and I, I just, I just, every time I smile, I know the real deal. The real deal. Okay, amen. And then guess what? Right now, 
I believe my personal life is a success story. Yes. Yes. Sure, look at all people you have that love you. That, that alone makes you Amen. Success. I'll be here for Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, I'll tell you when to start the dinner. And, do you understand this? Yes. Is this rich or what? Yeah. Are you getting this there, uh, J Street? Are you getting this J Street? Yeah. Right now, that's success. Mm -hmm. Everybody growing up, we all want to be a success. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's the best. So I believe with all my heart that everybody in here is a beautiful success story. I believe that. And according to the Bible, you believe it too. You are all success stories. I mean, if the Lord called any of us tonight, we can just go, Goodbye. <laughs> so it's like you, you and then we have and we'll play the music goodbye anti-gam so you work to keep your success because you already got it you don't work to get success you got it mm -hmm. wow want to say that again you work to keep your success because you already got it. You don't work for success. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Anybody like that phrase? Yes. Okay. We're almost done here. Good stuff? Yes. Now, are you getting good stuff? Yeah. Verse 8 now. Yeah. Now, you're supposed to have success in the end of verse 7, wherever you go. I love verse 8. Do you love verse 8? The book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Now, I could spend the rest of three evenings on that verse. Mm -hmm. What is the law? Deuteronomy. This book of the law. This book of the law. Now, let me, let me give you a little background. Quick background. Let me give you, now, if you go to, just turn a few pages to the left. Just a few pages to the left. Just a few pages to the left. Go to Deuteronomy 32 and write down, find out where Moses wrote the wrote it. Do you see it in there? Deuteronomy 32. Just go a few pages to the left. Where Moses wrote it. You see it? 46. You see Deuteronomy 32? That's no, right in the front. You see where he's at? Uh, mm -hmm. Verse 9. Deuteronomy 32, verse 9. Are you there? Verse 9. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. No, you're not, you're not paying attention. Deuteronomy 31. 30. Now notice, let's give you the background. He's up on top of the mountain. He's seeing when you wave to him on Mount Zion. What does he do on the top of the mountain? Writes the law. What's he doing? Ready for this? Many believe he's writing Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Right. So he didn't go into the promised land. Can you see God's masterful plan? <laughs> see, <Did> you hear? <laughs> can you see God's masterful plan? This is all background. They don't have a law yet. But guess what he's got to do? Allow him to disobey God. And then he says, I can't go in. The Holy Spirit of God says, no. But you know what I'll do up on top of this mountain? God says, Bow. Oh. Oh. I look out. See Eileen waving to you on that side. Oh yeah, that's who I think is. Now, Mo, yeah. I want you to take up the pen. Start writing. What am I writing? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. Now, when we and I were classmates, what would happen is we would always they would, we would read the Bible back then. 
we would always look at Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy as the Book of Moses. Very few people are, have it called the Book of Moses today. <laughs> if you go read some old uh, Bibles, it will say the Book of Moses. If you're Orthodox Jew today, what are they saying? The Book of Moses. Interesting. So, you blew it. You're not going into the process. Yeah. Oh, bless you. You got me. Not out of you. So you're not going into the promised land, but I got to work for it. All things work out together for good. He writes the five books of the Bible. He writes Deuteronomy. Why is Deuteronomy so important? Now watch this. This is gonna make you do the happy dance. Jesus uses it, Deuteronomy 8, to destroy Satan. If you want to destroy Satan, do it Deuteronomy 8. What does that say about the mountain? Depart out of your mouth. What does it say about bread? Anybody remember that line about bread? Man, man does not say by bread alone, by, bread alone, by, by, by everything that word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. How do you say mouth in Hebrew? P-E-H. So, now, how many ever had mouth problems here? If you want to destroy Satan, Jesus used Deuteronomy. Why did Jesus use Deuteronomy? Because it was the Hebrews' second chance book. So Jesus launches into the second chance and says, it's so powerful, even though it's the second chance book, but the second chance that when God uses it, it still can defeat any enemy in heaven, on earth, and below the earth. Now when you read chapter 17 of Deuteronomy, it, it prophesizes to the end of time. You're going to blow it because you want human power. Interesting, isn't it? No, I, do you see the connection with the mouth, yes or no? Yes? Yes. The mouth is what? The Word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm meditating, my right hand, my left hand, we already did that, on the Word of God, night and day. There was a Protestant called Wiggleworth. The man was filled with unbelievable amount of miraculous healing. What did he do? He took out a little pocket Bible in the 1800s and no more than every 15 minutes every day he was reading a passage. Wow. <clears throat> and now I watch baseball as you know. The players do something unusual. When they come into pitch they take off their hat and they look inside of it. Mm. I don't know if you ever watched baseball. I never noticed that. They take it off. Take it off. Mm. And, they look yeah. and they look inside. Yeah. What's inside? A message to themselves. Oh. Oh. And did you notice when they get a hit, sometimes they do this? Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. they always play That's the great. God. What are they doing? They're reminding themselves that they can do it. Mm. Now, I'm sure they have that memorized. Mm -hmm. They have to look into their hat. Mm -hmm. But they stick it in their hat, and there it is. Mm -hmm. Now, you got to stick the Word of God in your hat. Mm -hmm. And Pat's giving you brand new ones tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everybody buy one. <laughs> yes, everybody buy one. Yes. Yeah. We're going to have a pub. It's called the Pat Club. Yeah. <laughs> the Pat Hat Club. Yeah. The Pat Hat Club. You gotta put a verse inside. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what? Do you see the connection with this? Now, mouth in Hebrew is P E H K. P E H K. 
Okay? So what is what is your success? My success is meditating. Now, what does meditate in Hebrew and Greek mean? It means to do this. When do we have the word meditate again? In John 6. When you receive the Eucharist. What are you supposed to do when you receive the Eucharist? Meditate. When we receive the Word of God. I believe every time I preach to you. What was that? Sorry. Shofar. Every time I preach to you. Every time I preach to you, you should say, Wow. Today, a woman came up after me and she said, That was really good. Wow. So you should hear the word of God and you should say, wow. And all, I know a lot of you are doing that and I'm proud of you. Next, good stuff? Yeah. Are you getting this? This book of the law, verse 8 now. Thank you. Shall not depart out of your mouth. So what are we supposed to be speaking every day? One man said to me, you got a problem. You talk about Jesus so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem. It's his problem. I said, me like my problem. <laughs> this book of the law, Deuteronomy, shall not depart. That's why, did you see the connection? Oh, now, what are you supposed to do? Do you see our connection? Yeah. Signs and what? Wonders. Wonders. Do you see the connection? Great and what? Terrible. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. yeah. you see why we read those last verses? I'm almost done. Uh, it shall meditate on day and night, that you may be careful to do according to all that is written. Now, when you do according to what is written, hello, did you see it written? Mm -hmm. Did you just read in 31.9 with me it was written? <coughs> yeah. Hello, did you get it? Yes. May I make a suggestion? Yes, I don't so believe cool. if this is accurate, but may I make a suggestion? A personal observation from this text? Maybe Moses wrote Deuteronomy first. Yeah. <laughs> Did you notice if you underline what is written? Hello? Mm -hmm. This is Joshua. Hello? Mm -hmm. He just died. Hello? So he had to what? Pre-write it, right? Yeah. Before he died? Hello? Are you getting all this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you underline there, this is really kind of strange. It's written, for then you will make your way prosperous. Now, I don't believe in the prosperity gospel that you all won with the lottery tonight. I wish you all well, or your horse will finally come in. <laughs> <laughs> so Andy can make a 15th trip at his or <coughs> I'm first class, of course. And then, but I do believe everyone here should be doing well. I want you all to do well. Amen? No, it does not mean money. Right. So it means that you do well. Okay? Um, that you should not be scrimping. You are successful. Y yes. So if you underline that, they're prosperous, and then you will have, there it is again, good success. Mm -hmm. There's a title for the Blessed Mother out of, uh, I think, Ecuador. She's called Our Lady of Good Success. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good success. Mm -hmm. It's right. called it in Spanish, yeah. Buen Socorro. Buen Socorro. Interesting. And finally, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. So how many times do you need to hear that, huh? Be not frightened. Neither be dismayed. Don't go, oh, the world, I'm so scared. I think all of you are doing a great job in the midst of this world chaos and this church chaos. It's chaotic. You know, if you want to hear more information, what I see behind the scenes, I go, oh, no, you don't need to hear that. You know what I got to do? I'm alive. Somehow God wanted me alive in this period. Guess what I'm doing? I'm going to trust God. I'm walking forward. And I'm going to do what I've got to do for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And then, put, put may I stay righteous and faithful to the Lord. And as I do that, guess what's going to happen? He'll take me home one day. And hopefully by doing that, I'll bring a million more souls to the mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Are you getting this? Yeah. Yes. Even the guy I married with the three sons. I mean, I just keep going. Amen? Mm -hmm. Be not frightened, neither be dismayed. 
For the Lord your God is Emmanuel. God is with you wherever you go. Now, wherever you go means I walk with you and I'm married to you. Ruth 1, 16. Wherever you go, I will go. Your God will be my God through all eternity. Amen? Amen. Father, we just thank you for this word. I think it's very timely and important, and I hope it built everybody up and encouraged you to take one more step and walk with God. Because God goes before you, God walks with you, and God's behind you. We call that St. Patrick's Day. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. Amen. Amen.